We're thrilled to be part of this uh, anniversary celebration and uh, particularly thrilled to add our, our little bit of research project into this celebration. And um, the ten uh, I'm Michael Duncan. I am a design uh, architect and uh, design partner at Skidmore Owings and Merrill. And Rupa is our senior uh, structural engineer leading, leading the charge on this. And we want to just talk a little bit about uh, this project. Um, You know, many of you probably know Skidmore Owings Merrill SOM as uh, a collective of designers, architects, structural engineers, MEP engineers, planners, graphic designers, interior designers, and we do large buildings, often tall buildings around the world. And what you may not know is that we do a lot of research projects, and we have a long tradition of doing those. Uh, um, these are just three of, of the more recent projects in the last couple of years. On the right-hand side is a machine learning um, project we're working on recognizing cracks in uh, uh, laminated timber beams. We also, also work with universities, as um, University of Michigan at the top is a, a CNC milled uh, timber structure, and down below that is a robotics uh, arch construction project we're doing with Princeton University. Uh, you know, with our research on the SMA tension brace, we're, we're looking for a restoring force that allows uh, tension members to return to the original state after a, a major earthquake. And uh, this allows us having to replace, replace these systems and avoids having to um, uh, replace all the damage in it. And so, Rupa, maybe talk a little bit about this? And yeah. I won't touch it again. Um, oh, sorry. Um, wait a minute. Where did it go? So, um, tension only bracing are of interest to our architect friends in here. Clearly, uh, that is something that they feel is, necess is a necessary element just because it's a light structure. And necessity becomes the, is the mo mother of invention. So here we are with this research project, um, SMA device. And I, I, would, I would like to say that um, this particular, why is it not working here? Something is wrong here. And I would like to say that we as engineers would agree that tension only bracing system it's something is wrong here. I would say that, you know, tension only systems are actually. Is it a video? No, I don't think it's, it's coming up. Is it? What are you talking about? Okay. So we, we would say that um, tension-only bracing system is perhaps not the most desirable thing for because we anticipate large deformations that perhaps could be locked in inside the system, which can be compounded over time when we, it goes through an earthquake. So we started this research by looking for inspiration in, from different industries. And we ran into the medical science in place. Uh, we also ran into the NASA technology. And we came up with this, we looked at this shape memory alloy, alloy which was used for a, quite a few decades, I would say, um, in these industries. It was a, perhaps of interest to us because of its super elastic nature, where the original shape can be completely restored. And then we looked further into it, and we figured out that this research was also done in the structural part, and there were applications in the structural, uh, in, in the structural industry as well. One of the common example is uh, the one that is, exists in Washington, where in the bridge pier, we had this shape memory rod that was introduced in the rebar. Um, at, at, the, at, the, at the bridge pier. And the other application perhaps is in Europe where they were used as straps on the slab and that 
is to basically close up the cracks as well as compensate for the reinforcement in the slab. And then the then the you know we came we were starting to work on this UC Berkeley project and we thought of perhaps having this as a potential application and when we started introducing it to uh, John Mitchell was there as the dean of the capital projects and we showed him this uh, research that we have been doing he mentioned that maybe you should talk to peer because if there is something like this, and if it works, then Pierre would definitely know about it. And that's how we came across, uh, and John you know, set up this meeting with Professor Khalid, um, and we came, we came in and we presented this, and we waited for this uh, you know, abated breath to talk to Khalid, like what is his response going to be? And that half an hour, that we spent talking to Khalid was perhaps the most interesting thing because we were we we were of the opinion that he is going to kill the pro, uh, kill this research right away and he came with a complete different background and he was like this is what I've been working on I have a paper on it let me send you this and while we were talking and here are papers popping over which we were told to read and come back to it so Thank you for that, and that is when we initiated the conversation of this having this peer shake table test. And really speaking, it was on April 5th, and we had just like about 10 or 11 weeks to really make this happen and have the fabrication done, order the materials, get it in place, install it, and then have the shake table test. It was a mission, and hopefully the mission is accomplished today. We'll wait and watch here. And before we speak a little more for people who uh, want to be familiarized with this particular, um, uh, particular material, it's, it has a strength of steel, but it can regain its original shape after an elastic deformation. And there is a shape memory behavior which is temperature induced, where it allows for recovering of the shape after the heat is applied. And the other important property is about the super elasticity, where when it's released with the behavior, you know, it, it goes into this elastic phase, but without yielding the material so that it can regain back its normal state, get back to zero if it, is re if it remains in a particular strain, that's about five to six percent. If it goes beyond that, yes, there is strain harden, uh, there is hardening, which can also be recovered through heat induction. And engineers, we are all interested in the stress versus strain plot, and here it is for you on the left side. Um, the material that we are using is nitinol, uh, nickel, and um, titanium alloy. And there's a generic diagram of this stress strain curve where we can see that up till 6% this material will gain its strength, but it can still come back to its original state, in fact, to zero, even if it has gone there. And through the flag shape hysteresis, you can get the energy dissipation. And at higher strains, the material goes into the hardening shape, at which the stresses may be, it can be recoverable with heat induction. So these cables, are made up of individual filers combined into strands. And the strands are woven to create this cable. And through testing, we have observed that the importance of this angle of the cable on the force displacement curve of this cable. So we have worked with two different com companies, uh, Fort Wayne as well as Tripyramid, to do testing on these cables independently to look at the cable in itself and also look at the switch connector. Um, we did have results from the earlier test, but we definitely wanted to validate it for this particular material that we were receiving. And we are happy to note that it kind of matched the shape, uh, the flag shape behavior that uh, we, we were expecting. And we actually stressed it all the way to 14%, which is basically the strain hardening uh, part. Um, one aspect that 
differentiates SMA from typical construction material is the temperature effects. While the super elastic behavior still exists at a typical temperature range, there is a minor change that occurs with the yield strength. So we have, when we designed a structure for this, we have to consider the upper bounding uh, properties as well as the lower bounding properties. And then uh, we also had results from durability test, which basically shows that this element does not corrode like steel. Uh, there are results from sulfuric acid test as well as uh, separate test when, and the seawater test, which shows that the steel starts corroding, but the SMA cable still remains intact. And with this, um, as we said, we have a potential application in here, and Michael is going to go over this because he is our necessity right now. So, you know, we're super excited that we have a potential application and even more excited, as Dean Sujay mentioned, that it might be right in the very heart of Berkeley here. Uh, it's a, we are looking for an opportunity to build on the existing Bechtel Center. Maybe some, many of you know this. It's a 1980s building, a brutalist building. It's sort of half sunk into the landscape. Uh, it's maybe not the most welcoming structure or open structure. And so for our student center, we were looking for something that was um, a little bit brighter, but it does have a, a robust foundation and a robust structure. So we thought of this as actually using it as a base for our new building. Um, and our strategy is, is one of load balancing. Uh, so through selective demolition of uh, concrete pieces and scraping off the landscaping, we're able to offset that and balance new loads with a lightweight structure that fills in and adds an additional story on top. And this is, you know, this is about saving material, it's about saving money, but it's also about coming up with a, with a, uh, a more uh, carbon effective solution of reusing existing uh, buildings and we hope it's a model for, for other campuses and other buildings for um, construction. Um, the new building is an open, transparent, outward looking building uh, with a strong and inviting presence and it's right on the central campus, uh, right on the central glade. It's also uh, only a few hundred yards away from the Hayward Fault. Um, and the perimeter structure has uh, columns and these, these diagonal uh, brace systems. And this is our first idea of where we might use the SMA is on these uh, tension elements along the perimeter. Uh, inside the building, uh, is, the building is organized around a central uh, top lit community area that's really we call the forum. And each of the elements of the program and the engineering uh, supports are all around that area. And most of the student centered spaces are also in that space. Um, and we, we want to have this uh, uh, we want to have the expression of, of the structure evident in this uh, student center for the engineering college and you can start to see the, the character of it and I want to just point out the, the, the BRB braces that we had proposed on the left hand side that are sort of part of uh, not just the lateral system, but the character of the interior of the building. And this is sort of the second opportunity we have of using the SMA braces. So we'd like to ex explore what it means to kind of take those out and replace them with something more like this. So these are a, uh, a series of lightweight um, rod and SMA elements. You can see the darker SMA pieces on the end of each of these um, clusters of four uh, tension members. And it becomes, I think, an uh, important part of the way students experience the space and hopefully uh, provokes them to ask a few questions. Chris? Oh, thank you. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the, the kind of challenges and details that we're, we're working through here. So I think the first uh, main challenge right now in the availability of this material is it, it does come in smaller cables, so not the same scale of, of rods that we would typically be used to. So what we're working on now is how to transition from a, a larger steel rod into a device of multiple smaller cables um, where we can use this material and get really good performance from that material. So here's what we would look at maybe on a larger scale device like similar to what we would put into the, the Bechtel project. Um, and a little, more, uh, a little more detail here. 
um, and working with, with Tri Pyramid, who does a lot of the kind of architecturally exposed bracing um, to, to bring in uh, a level of refinement to it. And um, as you can kind of see here on the, on the right end, um, an embedded uh, turnbuckle um, so that the system can, can be pre-tensioned um, without a, a kind of big uh, obtrusive turnbuckle on the end. And then the other um, main challenge we're working on is how to take all these smaller cables um, and, and provide a reliable anchor at the end um, that's also very minimal and, and small in profile. So um, working again with Tripyramid on the swaging of these, of these cables um, that transitions it to just a, a threaded end um, with just a nut uh, at the end. And here's a, uh, just a prototype in their lab right now, what that looks like with the, the silver swage. And then you can see the, the, um, the, the nuts at the end. Um, on the analysis side, we're also um, learning a lot. Um, one of the challenges with you know, modeling in SAP or ETABS is there's not a way to model this kind of flag-shaped hysteretic behavior. Um, luckily, there was a, a paper in, in the uh, AC Journal of Structural Engineering from a couple years ago that we were able to build off of. Um, and a lot of our engineers who are here have been <laughs> working on this. But essentially, it's made up of each SMA device in our nonlinear model is made up of five link elements. Um, uh, multiple multilinear elastic elements, uh, hooks and springs, and, and then a plastic element. Uh, and then when putting those all together, in, in some in series, some in parallel, you can actually recreate um, the, the behavior that we're looking for um, very well. So here's um, our earlier test um, based on some early uh, physical test results. We were able to match um, very closely by, by tuning these, these five links. And then um, here's where we are now. Um, the, the gray in the back is our most recent cyclic test of these cables. Um, and, and you can see a kind of slope that's formed by the, the kind of angle of the assembly of this cable. Um, and then the, the black or the dark is our uh, current analysis uh, matching that. Uh, so a couple more things just to, to note, and they'll come important to the goals of this test. Um, Rupa's mentioning the point of hardening, which um, for this sample is around 5.5% strain. Um, so our current design is to stay below that. Um, and so that's that red line there. And, and so our, our tests that we're doing here are all kind of targeting right around there, maybe a little below or a little over. Um, and then in terms of an overstrength design, um, by, by staying below the hardening and then with the appropriate you know, overstrength, all uh, you know, attachments and, and components would be designed for that, that, that blue line there. So um, Rupa is now going to talk a little bit more about the specifics of the tests. So we know all about this repeat frame, and that is something that was offered by Khaled uh, when we started talking about the shaking table test. For us, it was only bringing in the rods and the SMA devices that, along with the gusset plates, which could be attached to this frame and be tested on. And this frame is basically a three-story frame that we have in here at the lab, which you'll be seeing in a few minutes. Uh, it's eight-foot bay. Uh, it has it's a north frame and the south frame on the other direction we are not applying the ground motion so that is a regular concentric brace frame system with angles um, and because we are we are going to be doing this uh, scale test each device has only three cables and we put in there three cables because that was the only that was that amount of material was the only material that we had avail readily available which we can we could have bought and we could have put it put this into 12 devices and tripyramid engineered this elegant solution where the anchor the nut ends are completely concealed in the end devices and yesterday when we were doing our sine wave test white noise test and we also ran one ground motion um, we actually completely dismantled this particular device and figured out how to do it. So if we can do it, definitely anybody can do it. I mean, I was there, so I could do it. Anybody could do it. So we feel pretty comfortable. Very elegant solution here. Um, and then, what goes? And this was how these devices were shipped into the lab, and they contained these wooden rods. And the mechanism was such that they were pre these, uh, these cables were pre-strained and then brought into uh, the lab. 
we attach the rod to it, put in the clevises, and when we tighten the clevises to a certain point and the rod is in that, pre is in that bit of a tension, the wooden rods pop off. So it's a nice way of just making that happen. But in the lab, we also had the strain gauges to measure that and make sure that uh, indeed in the cables, we have this pre-strain that we were asking them to put on. So here is our shake table test analysis model that Yang has been furiously working on, measuring the, uh, you know, the period of the structure and trying to again input it and rerunning the analysis with different ground motions. And uh, we looked into 10 different ground motions. Um, we ran one of them yesterday, the Loma Prieta one. Um, these are the 10 ground motion that we are studying at the moment. And either today, tomorrow, or in the next week, we are going to run um, most of them. Today, we think we are going to run the Kobe as well as the Coachelli. Uh, you're very familiar with those ground motions if you are in this engineering field here. Um, we expect that the amount of strain that we see in this uh, devices isn't going to be in the order of five, five and a half percent because the frame turned out to be a little softer than what we had anticipated it to be. Because, and, and we can clearly relate to the fact that when we model in the ETABs or any analysis model as a complete fixed connection, nothing is completely fixed. It, is, it has some flexibility to it. Nevertheless, uh, we expect the behavior to be such that uh, in each of the devices will follow the hysteresis that we are looking for in here. Um, we, we, above, we would perhaps see a drift of in the range of 4.5%. We'll check on that today. And with that, we will have Michael conclude <laughs> us for. So, so I, thank you. I just want to recognize. Um, many of the people who've been involved in this, and actually many are in the room here, so thank you very much for that. And our, our collaboration partners, but particularly Pierre, who's made this possible. Uh, one of the really wonderful things about today is it gives us, I think gives me and our team a little perspective on, on how far we've come in 50 years. And we realize that we are just part of a continuum that's happening, and uh, perhaps we can add our, our little bit of research to the mountain that Professor Masalam has, has described and, uh, and carry on. 940 so, report. 900 and <laughs> 941, perhaps. So thank you very much.